Hi guys! I was supposed to go live at 1.45 and no one reminded me, so here we are at the worst time ever because 5 is literally the worst time you can go live in a group and I'm still here, so it's fine. Cool. We're gonna do it because my kids are not here so I get a little bit of a break and Say hi when you're here. It's not me, no one's watching, but I just got a heart somehow. So I'm like, ooh, I got hearts, 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 which means somebody's watching me. So yay. Anywho, I'm coming live to kind of talk about my why and all that fun stuff. So don't mind me burping, which is cute, you know? Yeah. So today we're going to talk right now. We already talked about one thing, but uh, we're going to talk about why I do this, um, and how I got into it, and all that fun shit. So, that's why I'm here. So, if you have any questions about, like, anything about my journey, um, or my experience, or any of that that you want to know about, ask away, because this is the time. Um, I'm just gonna, gonna start, and then whoever tags along, tags along, and who doesn't, doesn't, it's fine. Um... But we're just going to talk about that. So, when, let's see, um, as I said, ask questions, please, because I need them. And hopefully you're driving home from work and listening to me, if that's what you're doing. If not, cool. I'm so tired. Hold on. <sighs> so, um, technically, if people looked, um... I started shooting in, I started the boudoir studio in 2017. Um, but truthfully, I started shooting like photography and picked up my camera at 16. Um, a little late for most people. Like I had no actual like real connection to it. Um, you know, I just did it. Some friend asked me to like do his senior photos and I was like, fine, it's cool. Um, and all these other things, right? And so... I just started shooting really in my like last year, senior year of high school, um, and grew from there. And then throughout college, it was just like a really great kind of great way to make side cash. And so I shot families and all of that. And I grew to learn what I was doing. And then I grew to love photographing couples. And so I photographed couples and photographed couples. And then at 18, I started shooting weddings and opened up free street photography officially became um a licensed business at 18 um and was a huge wedding photographer and i shot weddings for a really long time um i shot boudoir once in a while literally like people would message me and be like can i do that and i'm like i guess cool it was fine like i saw people who follow me who did my first sessions in new york um when i was 19 so Apparently, I was doing something right. Um, I hated it. Absolutely hated boudoir when I first started. Um, I just did it because, you know, it brought in some cash. It was fine. Um, but I was doing it the way that the rest of the world told me to. And so I picked up a camera and I was shooting... Um, sorry. I was shooting because I was shooting boudoir in the way that the world told me I had to. So I was shooting boudoir cutesy and light and airy and all this other shit, you know? It just wasn't me, so I absolutely hated it. And I loved my couples because I felt like um I felt like I could really connect to them. Like there was emotion in that. There was love in that. That's why I loved weddings. That's why I wanted to do weddings. Um and why I loved you know, photographing couples and being a part of their lives. Um, and so weddings really held my attention for a while. Um, and boudoir didn't because I felt like I was so not doing what I would do with a boudoir. And so in, let's see, 2017, I opened the boudoir studio. What really happened was, um, 2017, I was chilling at the coast. I lived in Eaton near Outer Banks and I, um, was doing fine. You know, business was great. I was shooting 25 weddings at least a year. 
Um, and I did that for a very, very long time for eight years. So I shot over 200 weddings in my lifetime, um, which is insane to me, but I was going to quit boudoir completely. I was going to just shut it down because, you know, I wasn't doing it. I didn't love it. Um, it wasn't making me happy. And two new boudoir travelers moved into the area. And so when they moved into the area, I was like, cool, I don't have to shoot this shit anymore. Um, I don't have to do this. I don't have to give my attention to this. I don't have to be part of this anymore. Like these girls can take it. I'll just refer out, whatever. And my husband was like, well, like, why, what don't you like about boudoir? And I was like, it's so fake. Like, it's so fake. I was like, these people come in and it's like, here I am, cute in lingerie. Ha ha ha, giggle, giggly, giggly, whatever. Bullshit. Um, and I hated it. I felt like I was just like, I don't know. I wasn't creating art. I was, there was no motion. There was no whatever to it. Um, and so he's like, well, why like, why quit and throw away like all of that instead of like, doing it the way that you want to do it. And I was like, the way that I want to do it is not going to be accepted here. Like we are in the South in the Bible belt around a fuck ton of churches. Um, and they're not going to be okay with this. So I did say, fuck it. <laughs> As most of you know, I'm kind of a fuck it person most of the time. So I said, fuck it. And I opened the boudoir studio and shut down, um, the other side of it and started shooting moody and just more emotional and intense and dark. Um, I didn't go quite erotic yet. Um, you know, I slowly got into it, but I definitely started shooting the way that I felt myself, um, that I needed to be creating art. And so it really connected to like my weddings, you know, it was dark and moody and edgy and contrasty and whatever. And, um, it made sense. Like it all made sense. It all clicked for me and I loved it. And, um, around that time, I actually think in 2018, I turned around and we went to, I went to Canada with three girls, three other girls, um, who are all boudoir photographers too. And they found out my pricing. They found out what I was doing and I got like the shit kicked out of me mentally. Like they sat me down and were like, Brie, like, I don't know what you're doing. Why are you paying to shoot people? Like the, your costs are not covering anything. Like what you're charging isn't covering to make a dollar to even have a family. Like, what do you, you have a kid now? Like you need to figure this out. Um, and they were right. So, um, I came back and revamped my whole business and was so sure I was going to flop. I was so sure. Like these girls were crazy. I was not worth it. Like my work, I was like, you know, anxiety plus post post adoption, depression and all of that, that I was dealing with in the time. Um, I just didn't think it was going to work out. And we were two weeks from moving to the mountains when this happened, when I changed everything. And I had someone email me and say like, I really want a boudoir experience. Is there any chance you have availability on Friday? And I said, this, like this Friday coming up, we were moving on Saturday. And I was like, um, I don't know. What do I say? I was like, what do I say? What do I do? You know? Um, and I sent off my brand new pricing and that woman came back and bought her album and spent $2,400 with me. And then got her photos, got everything and messaged me two weeks later and bought another album for herself because she, the, the one was for her husband and she wanted her favorites in her book. And she was my top paying client for a pretty long time. Um, and she just inspired me and like, kind of was like, I don't believe in like the, I mean, I do, but I don't cause I think everything can't happen for a reason. Like kids got cancer and other bad shit happens in the world. But, um, it was kind of like the sign that I can do this and I can make this what it needs to be to have a good life um, and to do what I want to do for a living and live my best life and dream. Um, and so I will always love that woman. Um, but then we moved here and I kept up with it and things were great. Um, and I found that doing the boudoir that I was creating 
was now more emotionally attached. So I was more, more emotionally attached to it because I was more connected to it and I believed in it more and I saw the effects of it more and it was no longer being cutesy, but more embracing yourself, um, embracing your body, embracing your sexuality, embracing all of it. Um, and I pushed hard for that. And so my mission just became like, I want people to see themselves like the way that I see them, you know, through this lens, um, and the way that I see them when I create these photos and all of it. And first it was about women. And then I said, well, why do just women deserve like this experience, right? Like why do just women deserve to love their bodies, deserve to feel this way, to embrace their sexuality, to do all of this. Um, and so I added on men and then I have couples and now I shoot it all, but we're going to get to that. Um, I found that every individual is so different. And so it's funny to me. Um, it's not funny to me. It's weird to me to see other photographers who tell me that they flow pose. Um, and flow pose means that they have um, a set of poses that they go through um, on a day, every day, or every shoot that they do. And that's how they do their session. That's how they start it and how they end it. Like, they just click, 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 click. Like, they know what they're going to hit, what they're going to do. That's what their session's going to look like. Um, they know that those poses sell. They know that that's what's going to work. Um, and that's what they do. And to me, it's terrible. <laughs> um, and it's terrible because are you really an artist or are you just a business person? Like, are you really creating art if all you're doing is taking the same picture for the same person, like each person in the same lighting in the same part of your like studio? And like, are you an artist or are you just just doing, just doing it to make the money. And I tell my husband, I tell my husband all the time, if I ever get to the feeling that I'm doing something just for the money, I will quit 100%. Um, because there's just no point to that. Like I'm an artist first. I paint, I draw, I bake, I do all of it. Um, and that's what really speaks to who I am as a person. And the thing is like, I think it was about a year ago, I caught myself, um, and I caught myself feeling like it was just another client to get in the door and make money. Um, and I stopped and I called in models and I said, I just want to shoot to just create. I just want to revamp. I don't want to do any of the poses I have ever done with anybody else. I want to do completely new things. And if they look terrible, they look terrible. If they look great, they look great. Like, I just want to stay a wash and I just want to be an artist again. I don't want the expectations. So if you're in a model for me, there's no expectations. There's no, you know, this is what she has to create. This is what has to happen. Um, it's just, I get to just be me and just create art. Um, and after I did that, it was my best session yet. Uh, uh, like during that time, it was my best session yet. And I said, well, I'm going to try to do this with every session. Um, and I do, I try to do it with every session that I shoot. Um, unless I feel don't feel connected to the person. Like there's times where I re I use some of the same poses cause they one look bomb and everybody wants them cause they look incredible. So I'm going to take them. Um, but I always try to do at least one or two new things in every session. And in some sessions I'm like, I'm just going to throw it in the towel and we're going to do all new shit. And hopefully like you're made out to do this cause whatever. But if I know that like, it's going to be a workout for them. And, or if they're a first time client, I won't do that. Cause like it's a workout. And if you've ever shot with me, like it's kind of strenuous. And so you get tired. So I won't do it with someone new because they're going to get tired fast. And then I won't, you know, whatever. Um, I'm kind of blabbing at this point, but it's taught me so much about being an artist and tapping into he how, who each person is as an individual. Um, and it doesn't take me long anymore to read people, which is nice. Um, especially if I get like a consult beforehand, that's great. Like we either connect or we, it's kind of iffy, whatever. Um, but I usually can tell so much about like a couple in the first like five to 10 minutes of them being like in the studio, even while she's getting her hair and makeup done or whatever. Like I can tell a dynamic um, and like that kind of thing super quick. And I love being able to spot how to 
use that dynamic. Um, and I will say sometimes it's really hard. I'm gonna take these off because the glare is bothering me. Sometimes it's really hard because like the dynamic of an like assholey husband or something really kills me, but you know, you just suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> um, but other than that, I get to embrace so many different types of love and self-love um, and journeys that are different and like where people are in their lives in all the different spots. And I get to bring them to this new place um, and give them an experience that has no judgment, has no shame and teaches them and allows them to be ignorant in a sense or uneducated in a sense in this environment where I can teach you so much. Um, the only time I have problems is if someone watch it, walks in and thinks they know everything and they don't want to learn. They just want pretty pictures. And that's really hard for me. Um, in the next year, I will be hopefully trying to push more towards being more of an educational experience and a growing experience and not allowing just um, photos. Like um, there'll be some sort of like requirement to the homework um, and assignments or like pricing differences. Um, and because of that, I really want this to be important. Like I want it to be a big experience and I want people to use my knowledge and grow from my knowledge and they can't if they're not doing the shit that I provide. So that's my biggest reason. And my mission has changed to not just being creating photos that you look at and say, wow, I'm strong. I'm beautiful. I am all of these things, which you are. Um, but also giving you the tools and the knowledge to be able to keep that mindset later on um, and not let go of it because you're having a bad day or let go of it because things didn't go your way or you feel bloated or you feel whatever, um, you know? And I feel like we're gonna have a whole other discussion about valuing ourselves, but what I do is all for that. Like I've literally just become so attached to growing people, I guess, and helping people that I don't even like care if you're a client or not. If you need to like have a talk with me, um, you can do that. Like I want to help, I want to help people be the best people that they can be, um, and have the most confidence they can have. And there's just so much I want to do. <laughs> I so, feel like I'm blabbing, but it's okay. Um, my why has just grown exponentially from just wanting to let you see who you are as a strong, beautiful, capable human being to really adding an erotica and getting there. And the reason that happened is because of COVID and it gave me time to like do the research and write the contracts and all of that. Um, and add in, I've always wanted to do erotica. Um, my only worry was the creepiness of men who are gross sometimes. Um, but I have three protective dogs. It's fine. I also have a husband who's really close by for work and a lot of other things. And normally we have an assistant. So we have safety things in point now. Like I did all the research. I set it all up. Um, I prepared myself for it. I shot my first one during COVID um, with a friend so I could learn like everything. And it felt so incredibly natural to me to be a part of those moments with people. Um, it felt so incredibly beautiful that those people trusted me to be there during those moments. And every time I have an erotica session, I feel, I don't know what's the word. I feel beyond grateful and humbled by the fact that these people trust me and are comfortable with me and love my work enough and all of it um, and love each other enough to come in and have this experience um, and to be so vulnerable um, and open in front of someone. Um, I think that people look at erotica and are like, oh, I'd love to do that, but they don't think about how much it takes to do so. It's it's hard. Like it's, I mean, it's nerve wracking for people. It's It takes a lot and I literally think about that with every couple. Like, I'm so thankful that you are here. I'm so thankful that you see that this is going to make a difference in you as a couple. I see the connection between you guys. Um, I'm proud of you for understanding how big 
of a deal that your sexual intimacy is with each other and with yourself um and that you're willing to step out of your comfort zone and work past all those nerves to come in and shoot with me um and to put yourself in front of this vulnerable position even if it's in a safe you know um non-judgmental state like space great things don't come from your comfort zone um and one thing that I think I just learned and it was probably my favorite thing that I ever read for school was that um I'm trying to remember how to phrase it it was just like safe safe doesn't mean comfortable and so when you're in my studio I always say like you're gonna be uncomfortable and if you're not, we're probably not doing this right. You're not growing enough if you're com completely comfortable. Like, especially if the poses are completely comfortable, girl, you killed it. Like, they, you guys, I don't know what you're doing because they should not be 100% comfortable. Um, two, like, it's going to be uncomfortable. In order to grow and learn new things and get into new zones and embrace, learn, and push past like um those ideas and you know mental social blocks and standards and judgments and stereotypes that we have within society um and especially within sexual society um in order to push past those they we have to learn to be uncomfortable first like we have to push past that feeling of uncomfortableness um and present them as if they're normal. And the greatest spot to do that, in my opinion, is in the studio. Um, and I've had so many couples who use this experience to tell each other things that they're into. Um, and that's so fun to me. Like, I mean, it seems so ridiculous, but like they've used the experience to communicate like, oh, we should try like this, like, we should try the leash, we should try the collar, we should try this, we should try that. I think we could do this. Like, do you wanna do this? And they'd be like, oh yeah, I'm cool with trying it. And I'm like, I see what you're doing. I, I see what you're doing. I love it. Like, it makes me, as I said, so happy. Erotica literally has this huge place in my heart. Um, boudoir does too. Um, it's a different place. I know how much change comes from before, but I know, I think because of becoming a sexologist, like just knowing the difference that sex makes in people's lives on a daily, um, I don't know. It's incredible. I'm sure that people watch my lives and are like, every time she mentions erotica, her smile is massive. And that's true because I, I mean, I absolutely love every shoot that I do, but erotica just, um, embraces so much about a couple. Um, and as I said, lays out the vulnerability and opens up new doors and new communications and so much. Um, and I love it. And the great thing is that they, because they know I'm a sex coach too, they find this also an experience to be able to talk about things and ask questions that they might have um, and maybe work through issues that they might have with each other, um, which is why it's getting built into the studio. Because I feel like through erotica, I've found these couples and I found these issues and um being able to have a session with them beforehand and then after it just seems like the perfect complete package to discuss things um so I feel like I don't even know if I've covered my mission statement or my why or if I've done it all but um if you ever read my mission statement which is up in the studio I'm pretty sure it says something along the lines of our mission here at the boudoir studio is to like teach what is it or teach people to let go of this like ludicrous ideas of society no matter their size their shape their gender their age any of it um that we're not bound by that and we're like that we are strong capable sexual intense human beings who deserve to live better lives than what society has told us like we are not held to these ideas that society has put around us um and told us we have to fit into this box um and so that's my biggest mission is like to disband those not only about our bodies and our um the way that we present our physical looks but to disband those ideas and stereotypes and thing um standards that have been pushed on us sexually as well um 
and I've met all, I mean, I've met people with all the kinks and I literally think they're all beautiful as long as they're safe, sane, and, um, you're safe, you're sane, and the thing is consensual. Um, and that's the biggest deal. Like people are like, what can you do in your studio? And I'm like, literally everything besides blood play, breath play, suspension, anything that has to do with like that kind of stuff. Like if it's dangerous, we don't do it. Like knife play, again, blood play. So we don't do stuff like that. But other than that, and that's because it's not allowed, not because I'm judging the kink. Cool, whatever gets your rocks off. If it's consensual, it's cool. As long as you're doing it safely, no one's gonna get hurt, cool. But not allowed at the studio because of safety, insurance, all that shit. So, um, yeah, I just love it. So that's why I do this um, and why I've been doing it so long and I'm getting more and more known for it um, and things are just getting bigger and bigger which is super wonderful the more you guys tell people about me the more that are here um tiktok has literally told me i don't exist i get like 20 views per tiktok now so it's cool um it's fine but i don't do it for that reason and the funny thing is like i told my husband um i think it was yesterday we were just talking about things like what my you know we sit down and i make my goals for next year um my desires what I want business to look like what I want to do what I want to be where I want to grow um what new things I want to learn like we are those kind of people um who are constantly doing things like that and he asked me like what my next year goal was and I said I think I want a cap and he was like you want a cap and I was like I think I want to cap that I make once I hit a certain number like my income makes hits a certain number I'm going to take the rest of the year off and just shoot people like models and like shoot them, like shoot people who, you know, can't afford the experience otherwise, can't do this otherwise and just have fun. Um, and then instead he's like, well, why don't you like just take time every month and do that so you don't get, you know, tired. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's a good idea too. <laughs> so we're playing with the idea, but you know, I just want to, I just want to make sure that no matter what, I just keep having fun with it and sticking to my mission and growing not only the business um, and my mission and reaching many, as many people as possible, but this is for me too. Um, everything I do teaches me something new. Every couple I meet, every person I photograph teaches me, um, teaches me something I didn't know before, you know? Um, and every experience that I've had with a different person allows me a look into a life that you know, it's different from mine and has different experiences than I do. And I grow so much from that, that it just seems really, um, it seems really incredible that that's my job. So yeah, um, next year is going to be fun. Um, we're definitely going to take more time to have fun and do things than we are. Um, and I mean, I'm going to shoot too. That's what, you know, book Black Friday. Cause I'm filling up that calendar for next year. We're already booked, I think January and February. So um things are getting crazy <laughs> um but I just want to make sure that I'm reaching people in the way that I um desire reaching people and I'm impacting the people that I want so well I'm impacting the people in the way that I want that's not what I meant not impacting the people I want I want to impact everyone so yeah but that's my live. I'm going to head off because I have photos to edit and work to do as always. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope that this is a little insight to my life. Love you. Bye.